Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities. I do assessment, intervention, and advocacy. I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. My name is Kim Sharman. I'm a reading and writing remediation specialist working with kids a variety of challenges. And I've been doing it, I don't know, 15 to 20 years, kids, kindergarten through college. And you also have ADHD. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is particularly appropriate because today, right now, we're going to yeah. talk about memory. And by okay. the way, if you've seen multiple of our videos today and we're all wearing the same attire because we're doing back to back to back to back. So Yeah, and I have coffee. Um, yes, and, co and giant coffee mug with lots of caffeine. All right, so working memory. So there's mm -hmm. two subtests. And you may, your child may or may not have gotten both subtest in the calculation of a full scale IQ. Okay. May so or may not. May or may not have an index score. Okay. Because there's but two for, subtests to get the for index. For a full scale IQ, they may or may not get both subtests or any right. subtests. So you, to get a full scale IQ, they use digit span and the computation of that. Oh but you don't have to use picture span. And many psychologists will not administer picture span because it's not required. Okay. I don't administer picture span because I'm looking at visual memory in other ways. And I don't always administer the WISC because the WISC isn't always the right test for the kid. However, it's the most commonly administered IQ test, which is why we're spending so much time on it because everybody has it, right? And we are going to do some videos paralleling the WISC to the WASTE, to the KABC, to the Woodcock Johnson, to the blah, 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 because there's other, and Stanford Benet. So there's other parallels out there and we'll do a whole, we have enough videos on the video list for a long time to come. But back to working memory, because we digress on more than one occasion. Um, working memory is what, Kim? Your ability to hold information as you're problem solving or working on problems to hold previous information or what you're solving at the poem in your, what do we call it, their buffer zone, mm -hmm. as you're working through things and not lose it. So you can use that information. No, is that wrong? You're close. So you take information in, you do something with it, you spit it back out. So yeah. let's do a really quick example of working memory. Cindy had seven cans of Coke. She drank two cans of Coke on Tuesday and two cans of Coke on Wednesday. How many cans of Coke did she have left? Three. That's working memory. And I use my visualization when I'm doing that too. Does everybody yes. do that or not? Some people do, some people don't. Some people do it auditorily. They do seven minus two minus two equals three. Mm. So okay. everybody does it a different way, okay? But it's the idea that you're holding something, you're doing something with it, and then you're presenting it in a different way. Now, the irony in that is on digit span, the first one that they give you is just short-term memory. So on digit span, there's three sections to digit span. The first one is digits forward. So I read you a series of digits, um, five, three, seven, two, nine, eight, four, seven, one, it's and I just gave a random list and made it really long, so I didn't give anything away. Unless you read, you really have to quick. repeat it back exactly as you heard it. But you don't usually do it that fast because I can. No, do it. no, no, no. It's yeah. it's measured pace. Okay. Yeah. So I read you a series of numbers. You repeat them back exactly as you heard them. You start off super easy, and you build. Okay, and you have to make. There's rules for stopping the test. Okay. So I read you those. So that's phase one, that's part one, that's forward. The next one is digits backwards. So now I give you, um, and I'm gonna make it up in a random way, 12, 10, 18, and you now have to give it to me in reverse order. So 18, 10, 12. And no, we never use two digit numbers like that. And I did that on purpose so I wouldn't give anything away on the test, but you get the idea. Then the last one, so the third one is sequencing. Kim, what does sequencing mean? The order in which events occur. Right. So in this case, now I read you a series of numbers and you have to tell them to be smallest to largest. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and I do 12, 10, 18. And I would say 10, 12, 18. There you go. 
So that's the sequencing. Okay. You, you total the score on all three sections, and that gives you your composite score for digit span. What if you're really good at digit span, but you are not good at other parts of working memory? That's yes. So there are kids that have that ability to tape record in their brain and spit it back out. But I'm not tape recording. I'm using a strategy to group things together and I'm visualizing it in my head. There are some people that are absolutely phenomenal at it. I am not. I can figure out patterns until the day the cows come home. I am not good. Like the minute you move into digits reversed, I'm like, I'm better at the sequencing, but digits reverse, I just feel like my my brain is flopping around on the floor. Hmm. I guess I'm just trying to figure out why you can be good at one, why you can be good at digit span backwards and forwards, but then really poor at holding like visual. I'm not good at, I'm reasonably good at digits forward. But I'm not good at working memory, but I'm, I was really good at digit span. Well, you did, did really well on digit span forward, correct? I think I, yeah. And back, I, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a long time since we've done that. So Many people are very good at digits forward because they can just like remember the tape. These are kids that can listen to music one time and go blah, 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 and repeat the entire song. I see. But I, by the way, cannot do. You will end up with all sorts of <laughs> <Different> weird <laughs> lyrics that were never presented. <laughs> okay. I never understand what they're saying half the time. I am purely listening to the beat. My husband is very nuanced in music and he's like, you have the tinnest ear and I <laughs> sing horribly to boot. <laughs> not that anybody cares about that but so there are people that do very well digit span forward there are people that do very well digit span forward digit span backwards and do well on all three there are also kids that can do some of the digit span forward do even better on digit span backwards and then crush sequencing huh. why would you be better at digit span backwards hmm. tell me why Kids with attention deficit that zone out during the first part because they don't think it's that engaging. They get to the harder thing and they kind of bootstrap themselves. And then sequencing is a piece of cake because they figured out a way to do digit span backwards. But it's not that they are they were bad on the on going forward. It's just that they finally got into it and they were hyper-focusing or whatever and they could do backwards. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting. Now, I am very, very, very particular when I administer this test. I sit like a freaking statue. Like when I do it, I do it in a very rhythmic and consistent fashion. So I'm like 10, 12, 18, 16. And when I do it, I'm reading the numbers. And the last one, I'll drop my voice, which you're supposed to do. And I'll look up and then I will not move because I don't want any verbal, visual distraction at any way shape or form because it is so hard for many of the kids to do this mm, interesting wow okay and most of my kids will i'm like we'll do digits for it they're like oh my gosh that was so hard and i'm like i'm sorry but let's now we're gonna do digits backwards and i'll give them two digits and i'm like see that's easier they're like yeah but then you're gonna give me a ton <laughs> like yeah i know so, so some people can hold on to sounds and remember the numbers. Other people have, like, uh, what I have to do is put the pictures of the numbers in my brain, and then I have to switch them around. So people do it different ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Um, some people have great auditory memory. Some people have horrible auditory memory. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I can do better at sequencing because then I can peg off my fingers like, I'll think about which numbers I'm hearing on my hand. Oh, interesting. And then I'll remember how many times I heard it, which can work to a certain point, and then I can't do it anymore. But that will help me. So let's say I'm a parent now, which I am, and I say, well, who cares? <laughs> who cares that if my kid can go forwards and backwards? Like, why does this affect them in their academic setting? Okay, so you go into your classroom and the teacher says, so we're going to get your rulers or your protractors, grab a sheet of graph paper from the back of the room, make sure you open your book to page 85 and find your partner. Wowie. 
and you can't hold on to that, you look like the kid that's misbehaving or like spacing out. And you're like, where were the rulers? <laughs> right? So, right. So, so there's, it's not like you're lost for hope for these things. You teach, we teach strategies. Like I have had to teach strategies for myself in changing the tube of my bike tire. You know, there uh, are ways to compensate for this. Another place that working memory is super, super, super important is writing. I was going to say brushing your teeth. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. no, that was like me air writing. Yeah, so know. when you're writing, you have to manage handwriting, oh. spelling, mechanics, grammar, cohesion, coherence. So you're juggling six things simultaneously. So if you have weak working memory, it can affect your writing. The other thing it can affect is your reading comprehension. Mm. Because if you're trying to decode the word and remember what the word means in the context of a story, okay? Your comprehension talk about, goes to poop. Right? Let's talk about decoding. Oh. Let's talk about, you know, you have a three syllable words with different syllable types and a kid is trying to sound it out and it's got unusual letter sound correspondences, right? Where it's like, no, Cindy, it's this root, and this is where we divide it, and this is the reason it, like, you do this to me all the time when we read words, and I'm like, why would well, you think that way? And I'm like, ah, right? Because right. I don't think that way. Um, and we'll divide it into syllables, and by the time we divide it, sound out each syllable, and then try and blend it back together, it's like, woo! Okay. Yeah, I have a, a particular methodology that I teach kids to underline the vowels and then we go from there to find it, to find yeah. syllables. But you're right. So but you anchor hard. each of those elements so that it's easier for a kid to retrieve and you build that skill as you go along. Mm -hmm. So we start off super easy and we make it automatic. So then as we get more and more complex and at this point, it's not worth my time and energy to go back. And I should, but I just don't go back and redo my dyslexia wiring, but such is life, right? Okay. But, but eventually, just so you know, parents, that becomes automatic. So they can yes. look at electromagnetic and they don't have to underline the vowels, divide between the, you know, they, it becomes, does that just become part of the brain figures it out? You, you've practiced it so much that you build strong neural pathways and it becomes more automatic. And that's how we help kids. Like we can rebuild this wiring and we can really help them rewire all of that. But do you understand right. the reason why kids' comprehension goes down? The kids that just, mem we have a million words. The kids that just memorize words, they're working so capacity. hard. Yeah. Right. And so their comprehension goes down. So they may like look like they can read. And the, what you say, why is their comprehension so poor? Well, is this one of the reasons? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about, oh, and by the way, we have kids that can do this beautifully. They may be like a computer and their ability to go, blah, 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 right? Um, and they can hear things and they can spit it back out. Um, these are kids that would make great translators. Like you put them in at UN and you put in a little headset and they translate what's being said in another language and go, blah, 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 blah. Um, Kids with good working memory um, can do, um, we talked about this a minute ago. You're like, I can't do Sudoku. I love Sudoku because I'm holding and I'm, but I've got a visual anchor and I can do the manipulation. But for you, you're like, I well, it doesn't remember it. Well, it doesn't come, well, first of all, I don't get it, but it's <laughs> weird to teach it to me, but I but I just want to tell parents too, don't give up because I have learned to do things that I couldn't do before yep. by practicing. Yep. And I come up with my own strategies. Now, can I do it as fast as you know, but I can still get there. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, writing aids memory. So when we have a kid with poor working memory, we provide them tools and techniques to help compensate uh, for the weakness. So that's the ability to take notes, the ability to have a calculator, um, the ability to use a highlighter and reading comprehension tasks, like on the SAT and the ACT, like we can give you tools that's not pounding on your working memory and allows you to show the skill set that you do have. And that's why I can take a hundred pages of notes at jury duty. Yeah. And I know every word that came out of every person's mouth. Yes. So that's, that's what my solution was. 
let's flip and let's talk about picture span. Oh, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in picture span, I show you a series of pictures uh, for five seconds, and then I turn the page, and there's another series of pictures, and you have to point to the pictures in the order that you saw them, some of which were not on that first page. So for example, uh, we'll use the dogs in the background. I might point to the Dalmatian and to the German Shepherd, and then show you another page, and you would point to Dalmatian, German Shepherd. Okay. Okay. Um, but there'd be a ton of dogs on the page. So what uh, you just did, I closed my eyes and I made the pictures in my head, whereas some people would go by auditory. Yeah. Now, many of my kids will look at it and go, I got it, and then not spend the entire time looking at it. I'm like, it's going to get more complicated. You need to practice looking. And the instructions on the test are very particular. And so every time you show the kids, look carefully at these pictures. And every single time you prompt them to look, okay? Because the span gets bigger and the number of pictures with similarities grows and they have to be able to point to them in the right order. And you can get partial credit or no credit. So if you get the pictures in the wrong order or you miss one picture, um, I don't administer it very often so I could tell you the nuance, but it's not worth it at the moment. But if you, there, there's a nuance where you're allowed to get partial credit and then if you make more than those errors, you get zero credit. And this whole series of steps and being able to hold it in working memory deeply affects things like long division. Mm -hmm. And even though those aren't pictures, each step is a picture of a certain function that you have to perform on this problem. Yeah. yeah. So um, working memory, like a low working memory score is super important because it has so many educational uh, implications in science and math. I mean, just about every class you can think of, there's a component of working memory. And so there is direct instruction that you can do to help kids build their working memory. We'll do another video on that. But um, if you see a low working memory score, that is a giant red flag and suggests that you need to do some intervention there to help that kid, both through accommodations and instruction, build their working memory capacity. Can I ask one last weird question? Yes. See kids with super high IQs and super low working memories ever? All the time. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right.